Joining me this week on Best Bets at the Box Office is an executive producer. We haven't had one of those before on the show. His name is Francis O'Brien. Francis, thanks for joining us. Uh, I think the first question we should get into is what is an executive producer? You know, it seems like there's a popular misconception that people think producers, all they are is rich people that put up the money. Maybe you can tell us what a producer does. <clears throat> well, there, there are producers who do are more money people. Mm -hmm. But what I did and what most producers do is we, we have to we go around and find the story. And in this case, um, uh, I found a story in Australia. Uh, that Peter Weir was working on. And then we, we put it together. We find the writer, get the story, get it cast, get it crewed, and make sure it gets made. Get it crewed, C-R-E-W-E-D. Yes, -E -E. yes. Okay. yes. Right. In this case, in making Gallipoli, we shot it in Australia and Egypt. So I was on location every day, working with the director. And uh, then we went to Egypt, and then right through the editing stage, uh, right to the mm. point now where we're out uh, trying to promote it. All right. So a, a producer is more an organizer than right. I think that's the, pulls everything yeah, together. The best way to describe it. And you oversee the, the whole thing. What distinguishes an executive producer then from a producer? Nothing. I mean, sometimes the executive producer can be the money person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a producer can be. Australia is starting to, to make interesting films. Frank uh, Morant was right, a stuff for an Academy right, Award. Right, that was the most recent one here, <coughs> um, directed by Bruce Beresford. They're catching on in the United States. Uh, but you have to remember, Australia is a very small country. In, in terms of size, it's very large. It's as big as the United States. Mm -hmm. But there are only 14 million people. So therefore, uh, the film industry is very small, and it's it, historically, it's been very difficult to get money. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why... Australians have learned to make movies inexpensively. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, our movie is the most expensive movie ever made in the history of Australia, and that was uh, $3 million. Break a Morant cost $800,000. My Green Career cost $600,000. And it's just because you, uh, you just can't make a movie for more than that and, exp and only release it in Australia and expect to make money. I had met Robert Stiglitz, who is Australian mm -hmm. and is the producer of, of this film. Mm -hmm. And we had this long conversation. He said, why don't you go to Australia? Since we know something's going on down there, interesting directors, but we don't know what. And he hadn't been there in years. We hear they're making films. So, right, we hear they're making films. So I went down for, uh, for two months and made a thorough study of the industry. I met all the directors and the, and the writers and the producers and the crews and cameramen, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and I came back and uh, I made a recommendation to, uh, to Robert Stigwood and I said, so I think we should set up a company down there. I think, and we should make movies. And I think if we make them uh, uh, good enough, that they can uh, be commercial in the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So we did in 1979. We set up a company. It's an R and R production. R and R production. The other partner is uh, Rupert Murdoch, who is better known again, another Australian, mm -hmm. better known as a, as a newspaper baron. These two men wanted to go home again and sort of give their home industry a boost. Do you think you'd stick with this producing bit? I think so. I think um, the nice thing about this, this, the first, uh, the first project, Gallipoli, it went so well. I mean, it was fun making. I think mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons I went in the movie business. It's it's fun, mm -hmm. and um, it's now on location. It wasn't quite what I imagined. I didn't. The limousine didn't come up, <laughs> and uh, I, they weren't taking me out to lunch. We were, uh -huh. you know, as you saw the movie, we shot in the most remote locations yeah. in Australia. Mm -hmm. In fact, one location up in the center, near the, in the desert, in the desert scenes, uh, in, a, in an area called Beltana, we. In the daytime, in, in shooting in the desert, you get up to 120. Now, as producer, do you say, okay, crew, that's where it is, go there, and then you sit back, or do you go out with them? No, I go out with them. Oh. This, 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 this producer, I think, doesn't, doesn't have all his head here. <laughs> because, again, I went out with him, I, I was with him every day uh, for uh, four months during the whole shoot. And we would go out and be in the desert at 120, and then at night, we'd come back off location, and we'd get down into the 30s, and we, we slept in, uh, uh, we were shooting on a man's property. He was a sheep rancher, and uh, he was kind enough to give us his uh, sheep sheds. Mm -hmm. So we were allowed to sh sleep in the sheep sheds. Well, lucky you. Uh, without any sheep. <laughs> um, well, tell again, us a little bit about the film, Gallipoli. Uh, it takes place in 1915 during the war. Mm -hmm. Gallipoli is a peninsula in southern Turkey, so, so it is a place. Mm -hmm. It takes place in 1915. The backdrop is World War I. And uh, this movie, I think, is the way I see it and the way it attracted me to it is it's a relationship movie. It's a story of two young boys who meet at a track meet, become friends, go off on a great adventure, and eventually go off to war. Mm -hmm. I think we have to remember before World War I, war was, was seen as a great adventure. It was, here was a chance for young boys uh, from Australia, from America, to mm -hmm. see the world. Mm -hmm. And in this case, uh, they go off to Egypt and they saw, they saw the pyramids. And um, still a lot of pride in the country. A lot of pride. And, 
and they were, it was exciting. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, that all changed in World War One during the, the, the trenches and uh, the terrible destruction and the waste yeah. of lives. But uh, I see it as a relationship story. It's the way we used to make movies. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. the sense, it has a beginning, it has a middle, it has an end. Right. That's where it all begins yeah. with an interesting story. It's sorely lacking in movies nowadays. Yeah, it's like you see one part of somebody's life, you just go in yeah. and you watch what they're doing, and that's it. Well, they're episodic. But again, it's it's difficult for American studios to make pictures today. It, you know, the average cost of a film is ten million dollars, and that's that's a lot of money. So they're constantly looking for formulas. Mm -hmm. People go to movies to have a good story told. And I think uh, if, um, and hopefully that's what we're doing in, in this movie, we're storytelling. Yes. And uh, you can be happy, sad, or whatever, and, but well, in this first, movie, you're all of those things. You're all of those things, yes. I, I, guess I saw the film, and uh, I think it's really excellent. Um, the ending is, is paralyzing. Uh, you, just, you just sit there and you're paralyzed for about five minutes, and you don't want to get up. It opens this week uh, at the Seville Square, and uh, people have to go down to the Seville Square to see it, but I think it's definitely worth the trip down there, and I uh, hope it does real good for you. It's opened up in several other cities. It's opened in, um, it opened in 12 cities so far, and Again, we're very fortunate. It's broken records in every city it's opened. So we're and you've won a lot of awards with it in Australia, right? In Australia, the uh, the Australian version of our Academy Awards, we were uh, there are 13 categories. We were up uh, for 12 of those in those categories. We won nine. So we were, were very proud of that. And, and the other awards were for things that you really didn't have. Well, we, many, right? right, it was Best Actress, and we didn't have an actor. Right. There was no strong leading uh, female in the, in the movie. And the Best Original Score, we didn't win. Because our score is not original. It's uh, music that's already recorded. So. Right. Uh, um, so we can't feel, complain there. So we can't complain, no. <laughs> so it's, again, it's doing very well. well so we're very good luck with the film. I'm sure it's going to do good. And uh, good luck with the rest of your career as a producer. Thank you. Okay, thanks for joining us.